I am not there. I am not there. I am not even present. In your present. I'm in Washington, D.C., five hours behind you. And I am an actor. But an actor that is definitely not in the moment. Or more precisely, a moment that is being realized for you as I speak, but has not yet happened to me. Your certainties are not mine. You have already made choices in the last five hours leading up to this here, this now, that I may choose to make too. Or unmake. Or remake. That should feel powerful. Power is the ability to embrace possibility and I am full of them. Five hours worth, in fact. This misson is dramatic to come to think of it. A performance of potentialities. A lodestone of stories so rich, I can see scriptwriters in LA slipping off their moccasins and throwing them up high in fever-tinged anticipation of their almost certain Netflix contract. Certain. Choice. The noun is exercised to invite the adjective into your reality. Goes well with safe and secure. I chose to be an actor because I felt safe and secure on stage and then, by extension, off it. There is certainty in drama delivered in precisely rehearsed spontaneity operating on a bound script. The process, the twists and turns, the occasional cul-de-sac, the whole dream factory, I just fell in love with it all. My first and forever romance. Like the best ones. Timeless. Unlike us. People. Humans, animals, things, we are fleeting chance, swirling in temporal eddies, flighty heartbeats of uncertain fear, moving on, holding back, racing ahead, growing together or apart. My boyfriend through college was a dance and math major who lived in Spain during the breaks. FaceTime calls were difficult. Time zones. And we would frequently go days without seeing each other's face. Stasis. Summers at my parents' home were lonely fun. Time spent there away from them was time regressed to when I was not... I had not come out yet. Where I picked up on the specialized skills of not living in the present and surviving it, working through the trap. There were times when I wondered if I could pretend to be straight at home since I wasn't with my boyfriend. An exercise of pure imagination. Always good to keep your acting chops in ripped form. I didn't get around to it. Too much going on. Too much to do. To keep up. Brunch, bars, nightlife, meet other gay folk, the good old gay agenda in my place to show up and be a member of the tribe. Earn your stripes. Be in sync. Solidarity is a deluxe membership promising you the comforts of blend in anonymity. That is how one gets seen. Safely. Straight men I know are already there, safe, so they can be individuals, dangerous, no agenda, no rules, just fly, just like us when we get non-single. Then, 
we are safe, gentled, no agenda. Relationships normalize us. Welcome to galloping individualism, the American way, the American dream. There's an American musical series called Glee about how a group of kids escape the harsh realities of high school through singing in a glee club. All heart and soaring vocals, uplifting joyous balm for uncertain times, and people. It has these two gay characters, Kurt and Blaine, who eventually get romantically involved. Talk all you want about representation, but yes, for the first time, I did feel like I was finally seeing something on TV I could glide into effortlessly, seamlessly, fully lean into it without editing the moment in my own head. I could be there. In the scene with them, being one of them. Previously, things only made sense. Now they just were. Wow. I was there. At some point, unsurprisingly, these two men kissed. Easy. Simple. Certain. Silent. But there was noise. My father snort. Unbidden. Unasked. Untethered. A mild grossing out. Our silences can make straight men uncertain. Acceptance takes a long time both ways. That's the rule. Make your choices and accept them. The first is doable. The second part is pure act three. Storm and fury and surrender. A choice made by an actor. An exercise of imperfections of fully realized, imagined characters and circumstances. You see, imperfections are how we see the inner light, what we call the character. They're also dangerous, fragile, risky maneuvers. Very little scope for evasion action when the limelight is squarely on you. That's when solidarity comes in. In school, I always found myself being in the ensemble chorus in musicals. Yes, very much in the light, but fully camouflaged by others. Sweet anonymity. And freedom to be little old me. I felt quite... okay where I was. But ambition, the feisty luxury of... The free soon made itself known. When I auditioned for Little Shop of Horrors in my senior year of high school, I was excited because I, fi I felt I finally had a chance of securing the lead role of Seymour, an inoffensive, mild-mannered nerd. While this character was clearly straight, I felt more connected to Seymour th more than any of the other masculine characters. For Seymour, a gentler sensibility could be deployed, which I thought I could work through. I didn't get the part, but what struck me the most was the, the director's response in the audition when I read for one of the other male characters, an over-the-top sadist. She said, yeah, this just isn't you. I wasn't there yet. Something that would crop up with clockwork regularity over the years as hobby transformed into vocation. Even when I began making it past the auditions into the rehearsal space, there would be the constant, well-intentioned, glided edge of directional intent. Physicalize straightness. Deepen your voice. Lower your stance. Be a hairless ape. Be the kind of man that men think are the kind of men who want women to want them. It's work, and you do what you have to do to get the job done. And I felt myself slowly and steadily ebbing away. 
Not in a grand Tennessee Williams way, no. I meant in the rehearsal space. I was not present. Just not there. For close to two decades, I spent a lot of time on stage convincing you to accept me as straight. <laughs> Getting into character involves focusing on the ways to enter the world of the play. Find an in that's personal, and then once you are in, play and have fun. And here I was, still on the outer gates, desperately waiting for my character's straightness verification status before I was admitted in. Instead of soaking in the million possibilities that a well-written character offered, here I was focusing on one aspect of him, the bloody stance and voice. To the exclusion of everything else. Given all the thought that went into just these two, I would have been a great Batman. My tradecraft was compromised. Questionable choices. Uncertain characters. I found a workaround eventually, of course. It wasn't worth walking around the building low in my stance. We all have different physicalities in different emotional moments. Yes, his baseline physicality might be different, but what was more important was the sense of transformation that his body embodied as one worked through the narrative. The change from relaxed to apprehensive, to high strung, to sheer raging despair, to a climactic meltdown, those were the beats that you had to get. Find the transformations and the baseline would take care of itself. There are sensations within the character that are startlingly new to me and blindingly familiar. The former calls upon my imagination, and the latter, my lived-in memories. And together they form one complete truth. For far too long, I had been responding to cleanly packaged, safely compartmentalized notions of gay, straight, etc., foisted on me by an environment. But what is acting if not playing with preconceptions? And therein lies the rub, as the prince would say. Whose preconceptions? Acting as a craft was all about me! 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 But... An act is unconsequential unless it lands before you. Two pronouns, you and me. And I had completely forgotten about one. The preconceptions are yours, and this was my moment to challenge them to play with and tease them out and hang them out to dry in their full absurdity under the unflinching glare of the Fresnel spots. This is how I find my voice, and it's meaning through you. The character is what I embody, but you are what I play. You are my mark, and you have paid for the privilege, or penance. So here I am, back on stage, virtually, performing and playing. There is an indubitable element of truthful pretense. A slight misdirection to shore up your willing suspension of disbelief. Where would the fun be with that, without all that? I'm five hours behind you. That's the truth. <laughs> but... Your present is not my future. This here now was recorded much before. My choices have been made, but we will share a moment together. The silence after I shut off this recording will be your silence. That much is certain. After all, a performance is a promise. You accept my presence. 
I accept yours. Leave no one behind. Welcome to the present.